Racism in sports remains prevalent. From the high school level. 16 year old Nicole Piles says her hair was braided with beads and tied in a bun like she'd worn it in previous games when an umpire told her she had to either remove the beads or sit the game out. To college with longtime coach Jim Boone, who told black player Tyler Williams he disapproves of his hair. You had talked about my hair like you're not liking it and like yeah. you not like want to recruit nobody with locks like mine. Kind of like basically saying like you're not going to bring nobody in with hair like mine. Uh, probably not. To me, that that's a racist comment. And it's not about race. And even the pros with the NFL and Rock Nation teaming up with Crushers Club founder Sally Hazelgrove. The organization came under scrutiny recently when on social media posts like this showed up. This is Crushers Club's president Sally Hazelgrove cutting a young man's dreads off. They are also known for encouraging the phrase, all lives matter. Yet in the world of collegiate sports, there is a huge story coming out of the University of Iowa. Former strength and conditioning coach Chris Doyle was accused by several ex-players of racism or telling them he'll send them back to the ghetto and criticize the way they wore their hair. He allegedly told former football player Terrence Pryor to take up rowing, then said, oh wait, black people don't like boats in water, do they? This and many more instances fall under the long tenure of Iowa head football coach Kirk Ferentz, pictured here. Former Iowa player James Daniels said black players were treated unfairly for too long in the program. In 2020, ESPN spoke with 14 former Iowa players and three former athletic department employees, most of whom described a culture where black players felt isolated and were held to a different standard than their white teammates. Running back Akram Wadley, who played at Iowa from 2014 to 17, also provided details of what transpired from none other than Kirk Ferentz's son, Brian, the team's offensive coordinator. Wadley alleged Brian Ferentz asked him if he planned to rob a liquor store or a gas station whenever he saw Wadley wearing a team-issued wool cap. Daniels, now a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, would tell a podcast hosted by fellow Hawkeye players, there's always a black table, a white table. The main root of the problem is that black players did not feel like they could be themselves in the facility. It felt like the black players had to conform to being the white Iowa try-hard football player. A point I always make about the civil rights movement um, is that as momentous and important as it was, when you really go back and look at what people were fighting for, it was stuff they were already supposed to get. Everybody deserves basic dignity. Everybody deserves to be treated right by their coaches and the people who are around them. And that is what the players are fighting for at every turn here is really the basic concept of dignity. Thus, Iowa players took their power back. Wadley and 12 others filed a suit in November of 2020. Though some charges were dismissed, two could proceed. The school's racially hostile environment and that Doyle and Ferentz intentionally discriminated against their own players. Fast forward to March of 2023 and a $4.175 million settlement was reached between the school and the players who accused Coach Ferentz of overseeing a racially discriminatory culture. Ferentz was none too pleased and made his feelings known through the media. Meanwhile, state auditor Rob Sand, pictured, voted against the settlement because he wanted one more domino to fall. Sand, one of the three appeal board members, demanded the University of Iowa oust athletics director Gary Barta. Barta is closing in on 20 years in his role with the school. Per the suit, players called for both Kirk and Brian Ferentz to be fired along with Barta. CBS Sports would note, this isn't the first instance of Iowa facing controversy under Barta. Former field hockey coach Tracy Griesbaum and her partner, former Iowa staffer Jane Meyer, were paid $6.5 million as part of a discrimination suit in 2014. In 2012, Iowa Associate Director of Student Services Peter Gray resigned after an internal probe found he sexually harassed athletes. Annette Sweeney, 
a senator in the state of Iowa, is the first Republican to call for Barda's resignation.